Okay, so let's test out some network sniffing tools. Uh, first of all, let's uh, let's start from something you can find in almost every Linux or Unix distribution nowadays. It's a TCP dump, right? In order to run it, you will uh, definitely need root permissions uh, because it automatically switches the default interface or the interface you specify to promiscuous mode, right? But to see the help message uh, it's okay to be a regular user so as you see although I use homebrew for almost all my tools uh, this one is provided by Apple and it uses libpkp this is a shared library uh, that is uh, used by Wireshark, T-Shark and uh, basically every other modern utility that does packet sniffing so let's uh, construct the command that will capture traffic in our Wi-Fi interface, yeah? So, it will look like sudo tcp dump uh, interface en0, let's write it to an external file <clears throat> right, and uh, yeah that's it for now, I guess Okay, so it's listening. So something happens. Let's uh, open another window and uh, generate some traffic. Okay, let's ping google.com. Yeah, so what we have here, let's send out. 20 packets okay 21 packets sent 21 packets received and here let's stop capturing and we see some statistics we have captured 388 packets yeah and all of them most probably have been written to the capture file which is tcp dump capture file the version Little Indian. Okay, so let's now read it by TCP dump. And uh, look through. So, this is how it looks like. Every line shows a packet, it shows the source, shows the destination, uh, it shows, of course, the TCP ports used source port, destination port, and so on, and it sees the, uh, shows you the direction, the number, the timestamp, and so on. So these are TCP flags, this is six of sequence number, this is the uh, TCP flags installed, right, the window size, the options, so this is all basically just metadata that uh, surrounds the actual uh, traffic that is uh, passed. So you can, uh, of course, uh, uh, this is not the text data that is uh, stored in this file, right? So if we try to uh, read it as text, we will fail because basically it's just the binary data that represents actual packets that are transmitted over the wires or over the air, over the air, okay? But uh, when you read it by this uh, little option dash R, it converts it to something readable. Uh, we can, of course, increase the verbosity and uh, show much more data for each packet, okay? So it's, uh, it's now, oh, sorry, it, it's, uh, if, if you double V, it will be different or it won't yeah it will so if you just add V no matter how many of them uh, you will uh, see a little bit more so there will be flags offsets on IP and the type of service information the length of uh, the packet its type and so on so it will be uh, more detailed but basically no additional information is provided it's just uh, another way to 
uh, to show the same thing. So basically that's it. Yeah, so uh, that's all you can use TCP dump uh, easily for. However, there is, uh, for example, uh, a way to filter incoming data. So it will just uh, filter something out, yeah, based on the criteria you provide. For example, for the same interface, yeah, and uh, saving to the same file, we can uh, provide filter. Let's, uh, for example, say we want only Google com traffic. Okay. Let's see what happens. Let's ping this Google com for five times. Okay. And uh, we have uh, 10 packets captured while 51 packets received. You see? So this means that only 10 packets that we have just generated to Google.com and uh, received back, yeah, uh, they were saved into the file. Let's check it out. Yeah, that's it. Just 10 lines representing ICMP accurate requests and ICMP accurate replies for responding to those requests. Okay, so yeah, that's it. Uh, we of course can then use these pickup files to do much more uh, interesting things. For example, to script uh, processing via uh, Scappy or just open in Wireshark and read through them and uh, try to do other more complex operations but as for tcp dump i think uh, this is the main uh, things you could do right so this expression representing the filter follows everything else okay so let's let me show you something more complicated not just host google okay so uh let's say it's host Google and uh, AT or TCP port like this. Okay, so let's now again generate some pings. Yeah. Then let's uh, netcat to Google Comfort 80 and uh, try to get some HTTP traffic. Okay, we we got redirect. Okay, that's neat. And now let's. Uh, Generate this HTTPS traffic as well. Same result. Okay. Yeah, and now let's uh, end up by stopping the capture. We see only seventy, uh, only seventy-six packets captured, while uh, overall traffic was much more intensive. Okay. So let's read that. You see, uh, let's for example grab everything that does not relate to HTTPS, okay? Okay, and uh, Filter everything that does not. Oh, let's let's make it more universal. You see, nothing is there. Okay, so our pings are just not there. 
as you remember we have created the filter that just uh, limited our capture to TCP traffic only on ports 80 and uh, 40, uh, 443 okay now let's uh, verify that this works both ways so when we read the capture we can also create these uh, filters for example not TCP port 80 okay what we can see only HTTP traffic is there right so this is kind of cool uh, this shows what you can do from the command line even if you have just uh, limited access via SSH or Telnet or your Metaprater agent deployed uh, in some other way, right? So this is it.